new technologies have an extremely important role to play, we think, in, in scaling up um, the uh, spread of the data that communities uh, can gather for RED, whether it be on carbon stocks or disturbances or um, safeguard monitoring, um, well-being data and so on. Um, communities are obviously the best placed um, to gather that data and their participation in the RED process is um, absolutely essential for the success of RED um, and for equity in the process. So that the information that's coming out about forests is not just coming literally from above, from the sky, um, but, is, but is owned and interpreted by the communities themselves. So technology there we think has a role to play um, in getting that data out and usable. The trend has been the use of uh, handheld technology, so mobile phones, um, to gather data um, and then to share the data through uh, an internet connection or it can be downloaded onto a computer and then sent later. The hardware, the phones, are getting cheaper and they're getting more robust and they have longer battery lives, which makes it um, a very good tool. It can be on uh, carbon stocks. Um, and disturbances in the, in, in the forest, the sort of uh, bread and butter of, of, of red, if you like, um, assessing how much forest and how much carbon there is. Um, but also there's versatility there to uh, gather data, sort of survey data on um, well-being and safeguards, things that you can't see from, from the sky. A mobile phone, for instance, is a gathering device which you can enter data into, uh, you can type data into, but you can also, it also will have a camera. It will also have um, a GPS device on board. So you can gather data about location, you can take images, um, and all these can be, can be sent up. So it's a very versatile medium. A, a totally different kind of advantage is, uh, or, or benefit is um, engagement of different groups in, in the community. So a lot of younger people who are more familiar with the technology then training older community members and getting engaged in some of these efforts to monitor the forests. There's a lot of studies which, which show that accuracy is high, almost very comparable, very close to um, studies done by or inventories taken by local experts or even national experts who are, who are even more highly trained. But there's also the incentive to um, gather data which is useful for the communities themselves. So it's not all about gathering red data alone. Um, but it's important that red gives a potential incentive for, for doing that monitoring and doing that gathering of data. You've got um, a very rapidly set of, uh, changing set of technologies, uh, which are sometimes complex uh, to use if you want to go end to end. So it's OK to use a phone as an input device, but then if you want to take that data, share it uh, in, a, in a timely way, and display it on a, on a map, let's say, then the, level, the complexity starts increasing. And there are various parts to the chain, beginning with gathering data in the forest, um, and ending up potentially with a, a cloud-based system where you can compare the data, that data which communities wish to share, um, with other remote sensing data. So along that chain, there are some uh, difficulties and complexities still. Uh, because technologies are not standardized, because um, some of the tools like GIS systems for, for mapping are still quite complex and require a very high level of, of training, um, which of course communities um, can uh, undertake, but it just requires more input and more capacity building. Our take on it is that um, these technologies are interesting because they allow you or, or help you to get to scale. Um, and without going to scale, then you end up with a very interest. I mean, you end up with all the benefits of, of community monitoring, but it's not clear how um, that can feed into RED at project regional or national levels. There you need scale. Um, so our project is trying to address some of the problems, uh, the barriers to, to, to scaling community data for RED specifically. Um, and our first step there is, you know, we've observed in two of the projects that we've been working on um, that there's a, and others that we've talked to, that there's a, a very strong internal effort within, within a community to standardize, improve the tools, get the best um, approaches to what they're doing. But there's been very little sharing of information on protocols between different groups. 
And unless you have a standard approach and quite a straightforward approach, then it's very hard to make that data and information usable by outside systems such as you know, integrating it with, um, let's say, regional or national data and making it useful for policymakers. And at the end of the day, that's what we're, why we're coming into this, because um, our goal is to help facilitate um, uptake in the actual politics and process of, of, of RED. So community monitoring is a, um, you know, a very long stand, has a very long heritage of, of unquestionable value. Um, and our question coming into it is, how can we take that heritage and make it usable by policymakers, make it usable by the international process? We think that in order to get more engagement um, and more uptake, that policymakers need to see the kind of data that's coming out of community projects.